Hey everyone, it's great to see you all again. Have you been struggling with your video production skills and want to add one more technique to your cinematic arsenal? Well, you've come to the right place because today we're going to be talking all about time lapses. From start to finish, I'll show you from on location all the way to Adobe Photoshop how I create my time lapses. And stick around to the end where I show you how I shot, edited, and rendered this time lapse of the Northern Lights. I hope you all enjoy. My name is Jalen Oban. I'm a landscape photographer and educator based in the Pacific Northwest. I create weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you with me on location to give you a behind the scenes look at what I do. If you enjoy the content, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and subscribe. So the first thing that we need to do before we even head out to our spot is think about the gear that we're going to take. For me, I keep it extremely simple. Just pack the gear that you would normally take as if you were taking a photograph of the scene that you want to take a time lapse of. At the end of the day, all we're doing is stitching a bunch of images together to get that video time lapse sequence. Your camera, lens choice, tripod, and any filters you'd normally use are a safe bet. Circular polarizers or ND filters are always good to have. Next, the piece of gear that you may not have already is an intervalometer. This is the tool that's going to allow you to take consistent photos at a certain interval. But before you go out and buy one, check to make sure your camera doesn't have one already installed internally. For Sony cameras, go to your settings, applications, play memories app, and see if it's already installed. My camera unfortunately did not, so I forked out the $20 to get this cheap plastic one from Amazon, and it has worked perfectly for me so far. And that's it. If you wanted to spend a little bit more money and add some motion to your shot, you can buy a camera slider. However, I'll show you at the end of this video how we can add some motion in post-processing. Next is to find a good spot to set up your time lapse. When searching, try to think about what makes a good time lapse. Motion or change in your scene are two things you want to keep an eye out for. Look for fast moving clouds or fog, changes in light at sunrise or sunset, or even moving water. You want to have some sort of change or motion in your scene so it doesn't look like a still photograph. When I have trouble finding a composition for a time lapse, I just think about what I would be taking a photo of when I'm on location. Start there and then maybe take out a telephoto lens to pick out those little details or changes of light. Or try focusing on that moving fog to see how it moves through your frame. Now that we have our camera all set up, we're ready to go shoot. As far as settings go, start by setting them to what you would normally do as if you were taking a normal photograph. The important part is the interval that you are going to be shooting at. The interval is the amount of time you want between photographs, meaning if your interval is one second, you'll have one second between pressing the shutter, including your exposure time. More on that later. For faster moving subjects like clouds or fog that you could physically see moving, using an interval of one to two seconds will capture that movement quite nicely. However, for slower moving subjects or astrophotography time lapses, using a longer interval may be necessary. One thing that you want to keep in mind, especially when you're taking a long exposure time lapse, is that you don't want your interval and your shutter speed to overlap. For this time lapse of the northern lights over Crater Lake, I was using a shutter speed of 6 seconds. Your in-camera or external intervalometer is going to activate the shutter at a specific interval regardless of the shutter speed. So you want to make sure your interval is longer than your shutter speed to make sure it doesn't overlap. For longer shutter speeds, having a gap of 1 to 2 seconds is a good starting point. For this time lapse, with a 6 second shutter speed, I used an interval of 8 seconds. This way, I had 2 seconds in between my photo being taken and the shutter being pressed again. Also, turn off your long exposure noise reduction so that your camera doesn't have to process each photo after being taken. This can result in more noise when post-processing, but nothing that Lightroom can't fix. When it comes to how many photos you need to take or how long you need to be at a given location, it all comes down to how long you want your clip to be. For a 5 to 10 second clip of fast moving clouds or fog with a 1 second interval, you may only need to be at a spot for 5 to 20 minutes. Whereas for something like the Northern Lights time lapse, I needed to take the same amount of photos for the same length of clip, but with an 8 second timer. So I was there for closer to an hour and only got a five second clip. If you're having trouble figuring out how many photos you should take or how long you should be at a spot, you can always use an app like PhotoPills that allows you to add your shooting interval, how long you want your clips to be, and your frame rate, and it'll tell you how many photos you should set your intervalometer to take. Also, don't forget to use a tripod as that will ensure that you get the same scene and the same photo every single time. So now that we have all of our images, let's import them into Lightroom and start creating our time lapse. The first thing you want to do is identify and select the first image in your time lapse. Then apply your edits to that photo. Next, copy all of those settings and apply them to the rest of your images. You can do this by selecting the first image in the sequence, 
Then, while holding down the shift, select the last image in the sequence. Then, in the library tab, right click on one of those images, head up to development settings, and paste settings. Once all of your settings are applied, with all of your images selected, export all of your images as JPEGs to a specific folder. And make sure to export them as a sequence, as this will make it so much easier when importing into Photoshop. Next, head over to Photoshop, open a new file, head over to your time lapse folder, select only the first image in the sequence, check the little box that says image sequence and open. As far as a frame rate goes, I usually do 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Photoshop will then automatically make your image sequence into a video time lapse. You can then head up to export, export video, and there you have it. A few ways you can add motion to your time lapse is to either slow zoom in or zoom out, or zoom in a little bit and pan from left to right or up and down. But I hope you all learned something from this week's video. If you didn't already know, I started a Discord server for the entire community to come together, share photos, and give feedback. And then at the end of every month, I'll be selecting one of your photos as a monthly contest winner. Other than that, if you could subscribe to my weekly newsletter for weekly updates, and then for vlog, blog, and other video updates, if you could like and follow my Facebook page. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.